Alright, so basically the last thing in this little lithium ion battery box is uh, getting the inverter put on it and also labeling what all this stuff does. So I've got a piece of genuine brand name Velcro I'm going to use to actually attach this onto our little box here so I can take this off still if I want to use it on something else or if I just don't want to carry the inverter on it, I suppose. So what I'm thinking here is I'll cut this up into four pieces. Alright, so I've got the four pieces of velcro here. I'm going to figure out which side's what on these things. I'm going to put the hard side on this, I'm thinking. So let's see, that's the soft side. So that's the side I'm going to stick on the inverter. And I'll put it, there's a little ridge in here. I don't know how easy that comes up with camera, but I'm going to put it just to the inside of that ridge. Alright, so with those on there, <clears throat> they are still stuck together. So we're going to pull off all the little protective things on the other side. Close enough to being in some kind of an order there. Uh, but anyhow, I'm going to stick that right there. Seems good enough and these will actually these will bend back around this way a really stiff 10 gauge wire which is kind of a pain in the butt to work with but uh, make it work here and this will just end up plugging in right onto this port just like that you might as well just leave those sticking up I don't think that's going to hurt nothing If I turn this on, there we go, a little power light comes on, so it does indeed work, as well as the lights on the outside. So, next thing to do, look at that, I can actually pick it up by the inverter too, that's pretty good. We're going to take our label maker and go ahead and label the different XT60 ports, well all these ports I suppose. So, I'll go ahead and work on that. Alright, so here are the extremely professionally placed labels on this thing. <laughs> but anyhow, let me uh, go ahead and explain what most of these do. Um, the switch connector is the one that we made earlier that's off of the uh, protection circuit that we've built earlier. So that one uh, has the low and high voltage cutout. Uh, the balance connector is for charging this thing. Uh, the main connector is hooked straight onto the battery, which is what the inverter will use, as well as when this thing gets charged, it's going to be using this, uh, this main connector here. Now, with two LEDs down here, we labeled power and fault. Power is just the main power indicator, and if we get a low or high voltage on the battery, uh, the red light will come on and the green light will go off. So, anyhow, that's how that's set up. And then the switch with the light, you'll notice this one's labeled main. So this is our main power on and off for both 
this switch connector over here as well as the ability to actually turn these lights on so if I just turn that on it won't actually do anything uh, so if I hit that main switch and then turn the lights on that will actually turn all these uh, lights around the outside on which are by the way pretty bright they were uh, lighting up my room last night here just to uh, just to test this thing out see what it does you kind of see that fault light flash there for a second when it uh, powers off sometimes. I get the timing just right. There you go. A little red light flashes a bit. Um, so anyhow, this is pretty much it for this thing. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you a tour around the thing just to give you some idea of what it looks like now. And uh, that'll be the end of this part. Now, when it's in use, it's going to look something like this with this wire coming over here into this main connector with the inverter being able to power on. And you can use both of these at the same time, of course. Uh, so if I wanted to pull 300 watt load out of the inverter and another about 15 amps is what I'm going to guess is roughly the maximum for this, just given by the wire size in here. Uh, 15 amps continuous for a short period of time will take quite a bit of current, but. Uh, yeah, so I can use both those at once if I need to. I can turn the lights on as well. Uh, so anyhow, this is a 300 watt modified sine wave inverter. In case you're curious, there supposedly 600 watts peak. Of course, you always question that with these cheap little things. I think this came from Walmart uh, quite a few years back. Uh, anyhow, all along the outside of this here, we've got these LED strips. Uh, which, as I mentioned a couple seconds ago, these are really bright. Uh, even just for the cheap LED strips, it's only like four bucks for the five meter spool of it. Uh, it's pretty bright. In front of this, you've got a power inverter. Uh, so you've got two outlets here, plus the USB socket. And then this thing, this is where I got the power and fault idea from. You got a power light and a fault light, red and, or green and red there. And coming along the other side, you have all the same stuff again with the LED strip. And the back, that's about it. You got a fan on the inverter, and then these uh, two binding posts where this actually hooks up to. So, anyhow, that's uh, our little power inverter. Uh, attached to the top of it as well as getting everything labeled. Uh, this pretty much uh, wraps up this project actually. Um, so this will not be the final part. I will make a part six which will be my final thoughts on the project. Um, some test scenarios just give a little bit more of a test. I'm going to charge it back up and we'll run some stuff around the house off of it and I'll tell you a couple things I would have done different. So. Anyhow, stay tuned for the sixth part, which will be the last one, I promise you. So, anyhow, that's it for now, guys. Bye.